Daniel Zalea from toleratedcinematics.com. So now we have our complete video edited together um, as you have seen in the previous tutorials. If you haven't, be sure to check them out. But right now we're going to take a look on advanced color grading in Premiere Pro. So we're going to use the Lumetri colors. We're going to color grade a scene completely together so you can get to know how to work with Lumetri colors, which is really powerful in Premiere Pro. So let's get started, open up Premiere and I see you there. All right, so here we are in Premiere and we're going to work with color. So to work with color, make sure you are in the color tab right here and you can also click on the Lumetri scopes, which I will be explaining very soon. So we have the program timeline, which we will definitely need. So I will drag this to the left here and also the Lumetri scopes. And apart from that, we don't really need that much. So I'm going to scale this up a little bit and this maybe a little bit more to the right. We don't need actual audio there so okay so right here we have the Lumetri scopes and what I like to use is just the parade RGB and also uh, vector scopes if we're going to work with skin tones but apart from that we're not going too much into detail it's actually rather simple uh, the Lumetri scopes but it's just interesting that you know how it works everything below zero it shouldn't happen because it's going to crush your blacks and that's uh, what you don't want and the same goes for 100 if you go over 100 it's going to overexpose your whites very simple if we go right here we lower the blacks we can see that it's getting crushed over here if we increase the whites it's getting crushed over here so that's not what we want double click over here double click over here we can lower the blacks just a bit if we want to but not further than this okay so that's basically what um, what these scopes are telling me but I'm going to put them on the left because the first and most important thing is that your actual footage looks good so we're nothing with these Lumetri scopes if we don't have nice footage so what I mostly do is just look at my footage uh, try to get like a nice position right over here I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and I'm going to delete my overlay so I only get the uh, original colors of my scene here the white balance is okay, but you can play around with the white balance right over here. So uh, you can make it warmer or colder, maybe make it just a little bit warmer, maybe a little bit more purple, but yeah, just uh, trying to style it immediately. Um, exposure is spot on, so for me that's okay. I'm going to lower my contrast just a touch, and I'm also going to lower my shadows just a little bit. And there we go or what I could do is lower my blacks and bring up my shadows depending on the style that you're trying to achieve there we go highlights we can bring these down as well something like this and now I have something that I like maybe a little bit less blacks and there we go so um, this is what I will do in my basic correction uh, we can look into the Lumetri scopes everything uh, but yeah, we're not trying to get the correct white balance. Um, if you're trying to get the correct white balance, just click on this pipet tool and click on a white or light gray area in your scene and that's going to get you the correct white balance or you should use a gray card. Um, but that's for another tutorial if you want to. Um, I'm also going to increase my saturation just a little bit. And there we go. Something like 150 should be okay. I'm going to close down my basic corrections. Going to creative, we can actually import looks right here. A look is actually just a lit, so, um, well, a lit is uh, just a look. <laughs> so, really simply, um, these are just presets that you can import in any kind of editing software. Uh, well, not any kind of video editing software, but most of the video editing softwares can import these LUTs. These are mainstream and yeah, you can read them in all kinds of different software. So right here, Premiere comes with a few uh, LUTs that they have there themselves. You can click through them like so. Um, but actually, we created our own and if you want these, you can also buy them on our website right here these are our lids so these are all the different kind of types that we have and just to give you a little bit of demonstration um, I'm going to be using a feel good and if we're going to open that up we're going to see that we get a uh, look look right here we can import a different one maybe go for a teal shadow here and this is going to give you a more action 
kind of seen um, and right now are seen as way too hot to use this uh, kind of lit. Um, we have uh, Apocalypse, which is going to be more like a zombie movie. Uh, you can drag these down or up uh, depending on the intensity that you want, but always play with the intensity if you're looking a lot, uh, using a lot. I'm not going to use a lot because it's a tutorial on how to do color grading. And if you want to get creative, uh, you can do everything yourself. But yeah, using LUTs is a great way um, to to get your nice style fast. So definitely check out the link in the description if you're interested in LUTs. Uh, okay, so right here we can add faded film, which is really overrated. A lot of movies, uh, well, a lot of online videos uh, add actually that flatness. I don't really like it, and actually most of my clients really hate it. When I was starting out to edit and I saw all these flat videos online, I was like, oh yeah, that's really cool. I'm going to try and emulate that and add some flatness to my scene. And and when I get it to my clients, they're always, why is that so flat? And I don't really like the results that you're getting me uh, just because I was so fond of adding a little bit of flatness to my scene. Um, but people outside the video world don't understand this. And, and actually, I'm starting to understand them more and more and more. Because why would you try to get something as flat like this? Um, yeah, just try to stay away from that and just try to not crush your blacks. That's going to help you a lot more. You can sharpen your footage right here by dragging this up, but just don't overdo it because uh, you can, yeah, you can see it really fast right here. It's already uh, a little bit too much, um, but there we go. We can add some sharpness to our scene. Uh, vibrance is the same as saturation. It's only going to affect different colors, so everything apart from the orange tones, as you can see, it's not really going to affect those. So really for the sky, uh, we can do it like this, and we can also lower the saturation so we don't get that orange horse because it's actually a brown horse and there we go and shadow tints and highlight tints you can yeah that's pretty straightforward if you're going to do that uh, you're going to get something like this I don't really like to use these um, I like to wait a little bit longer go to my curves maybe add a little bit of contrast here so just add an S curve like so there we go and you can also play here with the red, greens and blues. And what I like to do is just add a little bit of warmth in here, less in the shadows and in the blue channel. I will up them in the shadows and lower them in the highlights. And then you would get something like this. Uh, if we toggle this on and off, uh, you can see the difference. Pretty cool. Uh, so we'll keep it as it is right now. And actually, I'm not going to add so much blue in shadows. Well, kind of. Um, control clicking to remove something and I'm going to lower them in the shadows and you can also add them like like so in the shadows if you want to this is pretty cool but then you should go to the green channel and also do the same thing for the greens and just make sure it's not overall Actually, I'm going to leave it as it is. So I'm going to remove the blue and remove the green here and just play with the reds here in the highlights and maybe just take them away in the highlights. So if you don't understand how curves work, um, that's also for a different tutorial because it's uh, so, um, it's actually really simple once you know it, but everything on this side is highlights. So if you drag it to the left, it's going to brighten it up. If you if you move it to the right, it's going to darken it down for that color. So uh, it's going to become the opposite color if you drag it down and it's going to become the, uh, well, blue if you drag it up. So if you drag it down or red, it's going to become more orange, as you can see right here. So uh, these are all cool tricks, uh, but definitely check out other tutorials on curves if you don't know how to work with these. Um, right here, we have the hue and saturation curve where we can select different colors and just increase um, their saturation so if we click over here click over here and now we click in the middle of the blue and we drag this up uh, we're going to see that our blue gets more saturated but all the rest stays the same uh, so you could work with that uh, like so you can also uh, do the same thing for the orange but like delete all the orange uh, colors all the other orange stones or increase them uh, depending on whatever you want so that's uh, how you work with um, with the hue and saturation curve you can also uh, click over here to already have presets of each color uh, but yeah I prefer to work uh, manually with this here and now we have another very powerful 
tool which is HSL secondary and what this will do is just uh, you select the color or you select one of the presets uh, and you click on the sky for example and if we are going to toggle color gray we're going to see everything that's sampled so if we're going to uncheck this click on the plus pipette and just click around here on the sky we're going to see if we click on the color gray that our sky is getting a key so now we're only going to affect these colors which is really cool we can denoise it a little bit uh, we can blur it a little bit so it's coming along nicer in the edges here and then one cool thing we can darken it down but only the blues or increase the, the or increase the brightness right here so double click on it if you want to reset it so I'm going to click right over here just in there now we're going to affect a little bit more maybe a little bit more over here okay there we go so I'm going to reset my brightness because I think it's quite cool how it's uh, looking there and now we can make it even more blue if you want to or we can make it orange I'm not sure why you should do that um, but right here what I like to do is add some greens and this is going to give you that Hollywood kind of sky look um, you're seeing that a lot in movies that the sky is a lot a little bit yeah off blue uh, some off blue like so so that's really cool um, but then on the other side I also would uh, take care of the orange tones here so I would go here in the creative tool and just increase the saturation a bit and decrease uh, the vibrance there we go and now we get like a warm tone here and a cooler tone over here uh, maybe make it a little bit darker here, or maybe brighten it up a little bit uh, like so and we can also play with the contrast if we want to but yeah of course the sky doesn't have a contrast but if you want to focus on the face and you have the orange tones of a face and then you could play around with the sharpness of the face and everything apart from that stays the same so that's really cool really fun to use um, yeah then you have lastly the vignette uh, right here which is a very straightforward if you increase it it's going to brighten your edges if you decrease it it's going to de yeah, make your uh, edges a little bit darker and this is going to give you uh, a little bit more focus towards the middle of your screen so I can play with the midpoint here and play with the feather increase that and just uh, make sure you're not overdoing this uh, but on and off you can see a little difference uh, which looks pretty cool so now we have color graded our shot and if we are going to check our lumetri scopes uh, we can see that nothing has been clipped uh, but if we're going to see uh, this complete thing here and actually the effects we can put, put it together with the lumetri scope so you can switch between these uh, if we're going to check it off this is original uh, this is original and this is the finished color grading which looks a lot more stunning than uh, what we originally started from so really cool uh, Premiere has a very Premiere is very powerful color grading wise uh, of course if you want to get really uh, strong in color grading uh, some other softwares are still better at doing this but for the most part for the most people um, this is a really fast and great way of color grading your footage and they're really putting their best effort to create a nice color grading in um, in their software system so that's really cool I love color grading with Premiere so yeah that's it for this tutorial if you liked it give it a like also subscribe to the channel for more and thank you so much for watching and goodbye